Support WrestleTalk! Be friendly in the comments. John Bravo's documentary on the Roman Reigns steroid allegations was released on Friday. I'm Ollie Davis, this is Luke Owen. Welcome to Wrestle Ramble, where we're going to react to that short film that he's released that we've just watched, and it really absolutely told us nothing. Nothing at all. Told us nothing. Nothing at all. It, like Ned yeah. Flanders and his sexy <laughs> ski wear. It was, um, yeah... Kind of amazing, really. And, like, he has been very much on the defensive since the, it has gone live, because mm. it went live very late on Friday. Like, here in the UK, I mean, I didn't see it until... I didn't even hear about it until Saturday morning. It's how late up it went on Friday. I, I was at home on Friday. I was trying to delay going out that evening for, for a friend's 30th, which I have an excellent anecdote for, which is in the podcast. Which is free. The podcast <laughs> is free. free. Uh and uh, yeah, I was like, oh my god, this huge story might break, and I will, neither of us would be able to do anything. So no, I was like, I was also out. Yes, but then nothing happened. Nothing happened. So it came up on Saturday morning, and all the reports were was just that, yeah, this story it, it's twenty minutes long. It tells you absolutely nothing that we didn't know before, apart from naming a few other names, but never really implicant uh, implicating many other yeah. names. Uh, but B, it's just full of a lot of factual inaccuracies. And like spelling mistakes and grammatical mistakes. And so Johnny Bravo, uh, thank you very much. Um, he has been on the defensive on Twitter and on social media since then saying like, hey, like you guys rushed me to make this video. Well, I've got the statement. Should we, oh, we, got should we read the statement? It's long. Okay, yeah. Uh, I am a one man team. That's in capitals. <laughs> I do this alone with no help. Not even a person reviews it but myself. Yes, there are spelling errors when you're rushed by one thousands to make a video of this magnitude in this amount of time and work, there will be errors. I am human. And then there's a load of asterisks. 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 Yeah, I yep. don't know. Also, since no matter how many times or ways I say it, but there, spelt wrong, is evidence on reins. But without some key text to match the orders, I will not disclose it. Just wanted to tell everyone that I'm going to be taking some time away from YouTube to focus more on the WFN film, which is the film that he's making about this scandal, and other feature film opportunities that I've been given. I pour my heart and soul in these videos and feel that most do not understand what I am doing here. I was never a wave around your hand and film with a cell phone guy. I wanted to do something that was different that not everyone has the patience to do. However, I learned that this generation doesn't really know what's incorrect spelling again involved in making these types of videos and they want more instant gratification i believe in quality and always will as i have said many times in the past i do not make money on youtube and have only spend and have only this is Mm -hmm. verbatim, and have only spent thousands on gear and countless hours of learning and editing to learn this craft. Saying all that, I appreciate everyone, even the people who hate. It's the people who hate that got me where I am today. Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> He's put them but a full stop and then a question mark. And this is kind of, the I think, the weirdest thing about this whole scenario and this whole situation. Mm. The reason why a lot of people were saying, like, where's the video? is because y he said... I've got all the evidence and I'm going yeah. to release it in this video on Friday. And then he's released this video with none of the evidence because he said, I don't have the evidence to hand. It's with the DEA, which is fair enough. Like that, that's absolutely, you know, 100% a reasonable thing. The DEA are doing an investigation. The guy that he's talking to is in prison. They've seized all of his computers and, and you know, his mobile phones. So of course he doesn't have access to that evidence. But don't say you do have access mm. to it and then release a video where you basically go, yeah, no, sorry, I don't. Just don't make the, don't release the video. Like there was, there was no need to release this video other than to keep you relevant in the public eye. Other than to be the thing that he has accused other people of. Well, here, yeah. Of uh, what's the bit here? Uh, I was never a wave around your hand and film with a cell phone kind of guy. I want to do something that's different and not everyone has the patience to do. But here, like, and you seem to be the same. He's demonstrated a very obvious lack of patience in waiting to get everything together before you upload your first thing. But it's it's the younger generation's fault yeah. that his video was bad. So to, to take this back, like, as the overall timeline, for if anyone's jumping into this cold and we've just started shouting <laughs> stuff at you about this Initial film. Initial thoughts. Yeah. 
uh, is was it, it was around Royal Rumble time, so it was either the week before or the week after, where this YouTube video went up, and it was John Bravo, who's a filmmaker, his interview with uh, uh, Richard Rodriguez, who is a jailed steroid distributor from uh, a company called WFN, which used to it was part of a a drugs investigation, and they they are working together about bringing out how many people are on steroids. And Rodriguez's slant seems to be, well, I want people to see that it's not steroids that are bad, it's the misuse of steroids. So that's their that's their tone coming in. And uh, they, they released that first one where Reigns's name, Roman Reigns' name was used in it as just in passing, and that became a bigger story. And then about a week after that, they released another video, which I re-watched before we just watched that one. And... Uh, in that video, John Bravo says, well, the Reigns evidence is coming in days. And this was at the end of January. So he's his own worst enemy when it comes in terms of, of you know, selling these expectations. Self-hype. Yeah, and self-hype. So this is a month later, and he's been saying that evidence will be here on this video released on the last Friday. And there's absolutely nothing. And the um, yeah, and it's it, it's really it's it's kind of odd and bizarre. Like, and it it really is that first video where Roman Reigns' name was very much mentioned in passing. But because then the wrestling world is quite insular, mm. everyone sort of really took notice of it. And it's almost felt like it's like okay, well, I can try and capitalize on this little bit here. He's a very prolific figure because he, WrestleMania is coming up in the WrestleMania main event. I've got to get stuff out now because that's what's going to get people interested in me as a filmmaker and me as a documentarian but you've got nothing to really report or show. And then you top that off with, like he talks at the start of the video about how like there's too much fake news out there at the moment. Like he's like, I don't want to be like the fake news that's in the, the media, like the mainstream media nowadays. But then he's released a video that's got absolutely nothing, no evidence or any news within it. And has got misspellings throughout, mm. and like misspellings multiple times. It was oh, it was Steve Austin Day. It was three sixteen, mm. and he spelled Steve Austin's name wrong twice. And yeah. like that's I, okay. I've you know I've released videos here on on Wrestle Talk, and I've had spelling mistakes in those videos, and I've just you know I've gone like ah, do you know what? I missed that. Uh, you know, I we've, have, we've both done it. We've both, we've both done, done, it, done it. But you know, I, I'm a one man team. You know, especially in those early days when I was, I was, you know, editing and, and doing all the stuff. But like sometimes you just make those mistakes. You're like, ah, do you know what? I really should have spotted that. That really is. That's my fault. But I don't even think I've ever misspelled someone's name, or like I've never misreported a fact. I've always tried to be like, hey, here is what. You know, I'm I'm not even saying that. Hey, this guy is doing steroids, and I think that there's going to be a, a DEA investigation on him. I'm just saying, like, hey, do you remember when Vince McMahon won the Royal Rumble mm. in 1999? But uh, sometimes these mistakes happen. But he's just—it's when you jump on the defensive, and your whole stance is about like, I'm this really great filmmaker, and then this really integral. Like the whole video is all about—it's all about my integrity. My integrity yeah. is on the line. The Robert Rodriguez is—is is it Robert Rodriguez? Ro- uh, Richard Richard Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Uh, his integrity is on the line you know we've got to really build our reputation around this and then you release this video that makes me question your integrity and your ability as a a filmmaker i'm just like nah, i don't think i'm buying into this anymore and he might actually be right he might actually have Mm. this evidence but at this point now i'm like nah, i don't care he is he's doing himself no favors that's yeah that's the better way to put it his argument is uh that that he has seen all this evidence against roman reigns but he only has Rodriguez's uh, iMac, which has all the correspondence up to February 2016. All the future stuff, so the the up to mid-2017 when Rodriguez was, was put in jail, which are three phones, the DEA still have possession of those. So conveniently, I must say, all of the real proper evidence is on those phones and not the computer with four years... Of correspondence on everything's in that one uh, which we, yeah we, and and then he, he talks about you know I've seen this evidence but I can't verify the evidence and then you're like well that raises a question to me is it evidence that's good that doesn't sound like evidence that, then. that just sounds like uh, stuff you've seen that sounds like allegations that you haven't verified but yeah he's, he seems very confused about what what's the truth he talks at the start as well about um, proving the truth of uh, Richard Rodriguez but then you're like well you know I 
he is a jailed steroid dealer. He's he is harmed somewhat in his credibility. Yeah. So, I I mean I would never put all my faith in in that person. I would say, okay, I'm going to investigate your claims. I would never say I'm going to investigate your truth because yeah, that sounds problematic. Anyway, so he's that's where the the lack of evidence is in that he says. I'm missing over a year's worth of records. So Roman Reigns was busted for a... He, he had the wellness policy violation in June 2016. So that's yeah. that's uh, a, that's about four months after these records cease. So apparently if there's correspondence going up to mid-2017, the idea is that this is not a scandal that's over or a potential scandal that's over because you've still got these three phones. But according to Dave Meltzer, WWE are behaving like this is this is nothing because yeah. that they, 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 nothing's come out of it and they're not worried. And if WWE aren't worried about it, I it's hard to see that there's any credibility in there. Yeah, and it's it's really funny as well because there are times in the video where so there are two names. There's quite a few new names that are mentioned mm. that haven't been mentioned previously, like uh, Jinder Mahal, Sheamus. But he doesn't really like they're just names that are mentioned. He's never implicating them, implicating them in steroid usage. He's just like, oh yeah, this person knew these people. Yeah, and then there are times when he'll go like, oh, and I they've also had contact with John Cena and The Rock, two other names that are mentioned in there, showing the the evidence of that is just a, an end text message that says, oh, by the way, have you spoken to The Rock and John Cena? With no reply after that. So that's not evidence that John Cena and The Rock have had dealings with. That's just someone saying, like, have you asked them? And then not got a mm. reply. Yeah. And it's 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 things like that where you're like, it's, it's jumping to conclusions. Like in, that, in Office Space, the jump to conclusions, Matt. That's what this film really feels like. The, uh, the this film. That's the last text as well in this, in this correspondence. Yeah. And conveniently... The, all the rest, that's where it cuts off. Yeah. The rest are on the new phones. So it is really dubious. So yeah, the, the, the main names that have come out of this obviously aren't the WWE stars and wrestlers. It's still the intermediaries. So you've got Mark and Chris Bell. Mark Bell is a powerlifter. Chris Bell is the director of Bigger, Faster, Stronger. Um, apparently they are the guys, and this is corroborated by Dave Meltzer's sort of review on um, on the short film, uh, they're, they're the people who really got John Cena into wrestling because he wanted to be a bodybuilder, but they were like, you should you know, try coming here in the uh, UPW along with Luther Reigns, who, mm -hmm. who sort of, again, there was no real evidence against him either, apart from a text message with his name in. Uh, so through that Mark and Chris Bell connection, they then start flashing up pictures of Cena and Lesnar and Reigns and Daniel Pewter, uh, who was the, of course, the tough enough winner? Which <laughs> the John Bravo, the, the, the tough man winner. Yeah, John Bravo says, "Oh yes, he's the one who won the tough man competition," and Rodriguez is the one who corrects him because he describes himself as an avid wrestling fan. But still can't remember Kevin Nash's name. Yeah, Steve Nash. <laughs> that's another uh, mistake they make. Uh, he says, N "No, he won tough enough," and then he became like. Then he started to work for me, and then they showed a few emails about a, a potential contract. For Daniel Pewter to work with him, but Daniel Pewter has told Dave Meltzer, "Oh yeah, that's uh, th that never went any further than that. Like we, he didn't even remember Rodriguez's name. He just knew him by oh a gym owner in Miami. So the more like other sides of this argument you're getting, the more discredited Rodriguez looks, and the more naive Bravo seems for yeah. for putting a lot of trust in Rodriguez. Um, you've also got Chris Cavallini." who is a trainer. Uh, that's This is the one that you mentioned. They, they say Chris Cavallini is one of the clients and he trains Jinder Mahal and Sheamus. And then they just say, so there's a possibility that they could have taken them. It's like, well, that, I mean, it's, it's so... It's jump to conclusions. Yeah. It's, it's the jump to conclusions, Matt, all over it in this. It is, it's a really... Do you know, I, I haven't got my notes in front of me, but mm. I do remember writing down on my notes, this does feel like a rubbish episode of um, Serial. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. The, the podcast, especially because, like, you get keep getting interruptions of, like, this call comes from the county, you know, come, comes from the county jail. But it's it, it almost feels like John Bravo wants to emulate Serial. Mm. And that's kind of taken all the worst elements of Serial, because I thought Serial was a really good podcast up until the final episode when the host just shrugs and goes like, I don't know. 
yeah and, and like that that is pretty pretty much what this is mm. and uh yeah it's and and weirdly like that there's a few other names of the mentioned actually the other connections. one the other one i found was really odd is that there is a guy who they have evidence that did purchase um, steroids through uh, this company who went under an alias Jesse Ventura. Mm. So they make sure to mention this isn't the real Jesse Ventura. This is not, you know, 80s legend and commentator and film star Jesse Ventura. This is another guy called uh, Jesse Burdick. Is that his name? It's Jesse Burdick, a.k.a. Jesse Ventura. But they keep using a picture of Jesse Ventura in all the montage stuff. Mm. So it's like, so if Jesse's not implicated in any of this, why is he? Why have you put him in the montage? Then? Yeah, like why are you essentially saying that he is, but then saying that he's not? It's a very suggestive style of filmmaking. I don't know if anyone has seen uh, this awful propaganda film. I'm sure it's going to get a lot of defenders now. Called Zeitgeist. I haven't and seen a it. Zeitgeist two and a Zeitgeist three, and it's sort of says that the Illuminati control the earth. Oh, for the lizard uh, people. A lot of people put a lot of stock into it but um whatever interesting points it's trying to make and anything that edits itself together that based on propaganda and sort of brainwashing montage i'm going well you know if you if you're arguing in that way you know it's like a used a used car salesman that sort of uh, stereotype could be selling you a really good car but just because of the sleazeball nature they're doing it in i'm pointing at my own jacket you're like yeah, I didn't want to have anything to do with you, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I don't want your car. And that's, this is what that feels a bit like, especially because when they're running through a lot of these names, and the Ultimate Warrior's name is brought up at one point with a picture, uh, not as uh, it, not as a, a client or anything, it just says, this person knew these people. And then just they do a montage of those, and Ultimate Warrior was one of those. And weirdly, it said, Ultimate Warrior, uh, WWE Hall of Famer, R.I.P., I thought that's a weird thing to put in the little uh, text bit below someone's name, R.I.P. And then out of nowhere, at the end of this short 20-minute movie that really says absolutely nothing, a dedication card comes up saying, In honour of a legend, the ultimate warrior, thanks to all who believed. And you're like... (laughs) What the hell is ha- what is this weird universe? It's so funny because we watched this video together just before we came in to record this. And when that card came up, you literally like, I mean, you dropped all your notes. You nearly jumped out of your seat being like, what is this? What is happening? It's like, but he's, he, Bravo has said a few times, I'm not a wrestling guy. I don't know anything about wrestling. And obviously, because he's spelt, you know, Steve, Steve Austin's, Austin's name. last name wrong, which isn't hard to spell. And it's one of the biggest names in the history yes. of this business. I mean, just a simple Google. <laughs> well, that would requ- see. But that would require investigative journalism, which apparently is not on his um, agenda. At I the wouldn't moment. say Google in his investigative journalism. It's a step further than <laughs> yeah. what he's done, though. And uh, it's just yet yeah, to, to do that. And it's like, oh, yeah, the ultimate warrior. Maybe he did Google and see like a WWF fluff piece, WWE fluff piece on his amazing legacy. So, yeah, all right, that's, that's good. <laughs> I just absolutely bizarre really really bizarre story yeah uh and i th- i think we can probably move on you know I'm, I'm willing to this is such a sloppily produced set of allegations over the last couple of months and the way it's unfolded i think we can safely move on yeah I, he, johnny bravo is a guy who wants to be like be a serious documentarian but like documentaries take years and years and years to make like a lot of documentary filmmakers work on one project for four mm. or five years before they release the eventual product whereas bravo has done this in the span of six weeks or so and this is the result of it because apparently it's our fault because we asked for it I mean, you know he mm. you know he was the one who promised it so it's it's a very odd thing i think that there's a lot of stuff that bravo can learn from from his time here and you know he said that it's also weird as well in the video in the documentary he says i'm getting the evidence as soon as possible like it's just a matter of time before i get this but now in his statement he's like i'm taking some time away so i don't know where he stands but uh, by all accounts, WWE have like completely discredited it, and they're not buying into it. And the the WrestleMania main event of Lesnar Reigns remains. Elsewhere in wrestling news, yeah. it's it's the road to WrestleMania. Do you want to tell us about this AJ Styles thing? Because well, this is another thing 
that could be a word. Yeah, well, this is a very, I find it quite an interesting one. So on Friday night, WWE did a show in Madison Square Garden, the absolute mm. mecca of WWE. They bloody love doing shows there. They always put on a good show as well. Because, yep. uh, I mean, it was a raw show, wasn't it? And they had this SmackDown match. As they often sometimes yeah, do. They Brock Lesnar like, was in there. They kind of like try and make it, uh, you know, a, a much of a, a WWE mm. event rather than a brand exclusive thing. Last it's like year, their home base at uh, yeah. Madison Square Garden. Well, last year we had the United States title switch. Yes. Uh, during, yeah. a, during a raw branded Madison Square Garden show. The one that was meant to happen. Yes, that one yes, was actually that's meant, to, meant happen. to happen. Yes, that's right. Weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> on the house show and you screw up on the pay-per-view. Sure. But, sure. But anyway, so that was the show I did on Friday and it was meant to be AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn but before the bell, Owens and Zayn rushed the ring and attacked them mm. and the referee threw up the dreaded X and AJ was helped to the back. He was visibly limping and he was assisted out to the back. Uh, and then it turned into a singles match between Nakamura and Owens, which uh, Sami Zayn tried to get involved in, and AJ came out afterwards with a chair to attack Sami, but then limped to the back again. So there were a lot of people who were just like, oh, okay, I think this was just an angle. It was just a storyline just to do this. But the match was cut short. That is one of the, the other things that people are saying, is that this was meant to be a longer mm. match, and it was cut short because, I'm doing big air quotes for podcast listeners, take a drink, because of the injury. So... That's that's one side of it. Then the next side of that is that on Saturday night, they were doing a show in Odessa, Texas, which is a SmackDown show. AJ Styles was advertised and it was scheduled to appear, and it was then announced right at the top of the show, AJ Styles was injured at Madison Square Garden and will not be here mm. tonight. So is it something that they're doing in storyline? Is it an actual injury? Is it something that just... Because like Dave Meltzer kind of alluded... Or did Brock Lesnar go into business for himself? Or did Brock Lesnar go yeah. into business for himself? There's, there's many ways that this could go, really. Uh, I think we should make this a running gag. We should <laughs> give a few possibilities, and then no matter how unrelated the story is to Brock Lesnar, or did Brock Lesnar did go, go into to... it for himself? <laughs> I wish you'd told me that before I wrote the new script. Sorry, man, I just came <laughs> up with it. <laughs> Um, Look at Paul Heyman. <laughs> I know Paul, Paul Heyman had a proper pop at me on Twitter. A pop at you. He had a little pop at Poppy me. Poppy Paul <laughs> having a pop at Luke. <laughs> all right, all right. Triggered Snowflake. Um, but- oh my god! Imagine calling <laughs> Paul Heyman a Snowflake so- when he's the guy that you know. He's the, I, I'm a Jew. That's he seems like he always. Uh, drops that in, doesn't so he, just in Christmas time. My favourite comment I've ever read about Paul Heyman was that he could sell bacon to a vegan Jew. Yes. Like, that's yeah. a great, a great comment about his selling ability. I mean, the, the video that you made on Sunday, the really good video, everyone should go and check it out. Because we were allowed to use a few clips courtesy of uh, new signee Kenny McIntosh from Inside the Ropes. And it's just when Paul Heyman, when I did it myself, when Paul Heyman <laughs> talks... You just go into a trance. Like, he has a hypnotic delivery. Oh, I was there that night. I was there up in the rafters, uh, and it was something special. One of the best live events of wrestling I've ever been to. You know, that's including actual wrestling. Yeah. wrestling. Yeah. We, should have had, we should have interviewed you in the video as well. Oh, yeah. Well, well, you know, yeah. too late now. This video's live. Um, go check it out. I can't remember what the point I was making was. You now. were talking about uh, whether it was a, a story work. work or a storyline. Yes. Yeah. So there are some people who think it's a storyline. There are some people who are a bit more concerned that it is a legitimate injury. If he was just limping to the back, I can't see the WrestleMania match being in too much jeopardy. It is still mm. advertised on WWE.com at the time of recording. So I think we're just going to have to wait to see what happens on SmackDown Live on Tuesday to see, A, if this is brought up, or B, if they're just going to just sort of move past it. Because it seems weird that Owens and Zayn are sort of involved in this because their storyline's not connected to AJ and Nakamura. Mm. Their storyline is more connected with Shane and Daniel Bryan. Um, so it seems weird that if, if it is a storyline that's going to run into SmackDown, that it is Owens and Zayn. Unless, let's, I mean, the way the WWE Twitter account, it was a frustrated Owens and Zayn attack mm. Styles and Nakamura. So perhaps they are going to try and use this to create like, two concurrently running storylines that kind of cross over into each other in the road to WrestleMania. Yeah, like Owens and Sammy have gone wild. We can't control them. Daniel Bryan's got to come out of retirement. And uh, Could something be. like that. Yeah. The... To me, it and it was quite a brutal beatdown. You watch the video mm. of, with with the putting the chair on at AJ's ankle and and slapping it down with another chair. I if AJ was genuinely injured, I wouldn't have made it that violent to ride him out with injury. Or the thing I, if it's anything, I think maybe AJ's got a little nagging pain, and they're like, okay, better be safe than sorry. Let's give you a few days off. Yeah. You write him out that way. That's what Dave Meltzer said yeah. as well. He said that the, the injury was 
like probably happened before mm. the match, and they just use this as a way to kind of cover for that injury and give him a couple of days off. Yeah, because that's a big old match. But speaking of Daniel Bryan... Speaking of segues. Yeah, that's... Uh, he he had an interview with uh, The National, which is an Abu Dhabi newspaper yesterday, and he, he just spoke about how he's not cleared yet, but he feels like there's a chance because he's done so much to get cleared. And all the doctors WWE have sent him to, they've cleared him. It's And he, he, did, he did have a really interesting quote at the end, where it was like, there's two ways this can go. Um, either they can do the match without me, or I'm cleared and they can do the match with me. Hmm. So it's like, ah, that's... The, you, 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 you kind of... To me, that seemed like he let slip the backstage plans where they've got contingency and what they would prefer to do, which is, of course, I think, Brian coming back. Why wouldn't they want to if he's healthy? And WrestleVotes, who are, you know, they've been very credible in the past. They're the Twitter account that broke the the, the Neville walkout story and a few other things I can't remember now. They said that they heard a few weeks ago, WWE said, here's the, you know, they pitched Brian the match, but Brian was like, that's not what I want to do for my comeback. I, I want to work more of a, what well, you know, a proper match because it was going to be very safe tag match, presumably, where he didn't do much at all. Mm. So, Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's looking like Daniel Bryan is, it might happen. And Wrestling Observer said there was a strong push to get Brian cleared a couple of weeks ago. Well, we've kind of been talking about this. It feels like we've been talking about this for a few months now. It feels like the WWE and Daniel Bryan have been really working together mm. to get Brian cleared because he's integral to this story. Like he is a real uh, focused part of this this angle, but the, you know, that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. That's the match at the end that makes the most sense. Is mm. the, is this tag match? But then there's reports that if he can't get cleared, maybe he'll just be the special guest referee and maybe they'll play it like, is he siding with Owens and Zane? Whose side is he on? No, they'll play it that side. But then who is Shane's partner going to be? Um, because there's no one really else factored into the, into Ziggler, the story. Man. Well, yeah, just turn him babyface, I yeah. suppose. Because they sort of did that a couple of weeks ago and then stopped doing that. Well, well that's the other thing. Like, there's it, Meltzer said a few weeks ago that... Sammy and Owens were going to be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. There was also a rumour that Dolph Ziggler was going to be working with Shane McMahon. That's why he had that babyface promo going into uh, Fastlane, but then he was a heel out of nowhere. Yeah, where I've, I've never had a singles match at WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. So, but something's changed recently where they did the, they brought back the KO Sammy Shane stuff. So yeah, it's interesting. It's hmm. interesting. But you know, I selfish i want brian to to leave wwe yeah i think you know i'd actually rather see him not wrestle at wrestlemania and uh leave in september to, to wrestle elsewhere but what if he re-signs in september well that i wouldn't want that okay. either <laughs> well, i'm just playing devil's advocate what if he does well then if he re-signs in september i would assume he would have been cleared mm. yeah so that renders that moot May maybe it's mailbag time. Of course, if you want to send us some mail in, you can do so digitally on Patreon because the mailbag is open to all Patreon donators. And I'm sorry, because I've just had a couple of people come to me on Patreon to ask how to submit questions. Mm. There's two ways to do it. You can either send us a direct message, um, and that just comes straight through to us. On or, Patreon. On Patreon. Or you can just create a, a post, and I, I get basically mail notifications anytime you send me a DM or you make a new post. So that's the way that I can see the questions coming in. Yeah. And then I just compile them onto a little folder. So first up from Britain's next top model, Phil Stopford, which two wrestlers currently not really doing anything would you like to see in a tag team to give them a bit of a career revival? Not yeah, the revival, not the revival. Obviously. So you said you haven't given this a lick of thought. No, I haven't. I wrote this down as the document, but I was so busy posting up the news that I haven't actually given this uh, um, some thoughts as to, to who it's I've got. To, it's but not as simple as you might think. No, because my first thought was, I'd say, well... Cesarus and Shamo. Shamo? Who's Shamo? Cesarus. Is that like a dinosaur? Imagine Cesaro with the little arms. <laughs> um, I mean, my first thought was just like, well, Bray and Matt, because like I just think that's a really mm. cool tag team. That it's something I'd kind of like to see them them do. That really could give them a bit of a, a career revival, particularly uh, poor old Bray. 
but then the question is currently not really doing anything and they currently are doing something yeah. they've got ultimate deletion tonight in fact looking forward to that yeah you... actually i'm a little bit looking forward to it as yeah, well you i'm, I'm your interest it, it's it's more curiosity than mm. like excitement i think that way i'm not like oh my god i'm just i'm bite i'm chomping at the bits to see yeah. this match but i'm more like hmm i'm kind of curious to to see this match because it's the wwe version of it and that's what i kind of find interesting mm. i'm kind of curious to see so, oh, which two wrestlers? Which two wrestlers aren't really doing anything at the moment? Uh, well, uh, Ty's not doing anything. I oh, suppose. that's a good shout. So Ty is not doing anything. Who and would he bounce off of? Who would he or bounce? has a number-based gimmick? Um, oh, I mean, I would like. I mean, you can't really do it at the moment because one of them is currently not here. But when he comes back, Ty and Mike Kanellis, the two guys Why? that came in with a bit of fanfare to smack their life, but have not had anything happen for them yet. I think they could do quite a nice bit of comedy. Uh, bouncing off with them. Also, Mike Kanellis has the best theme song in WWE, mm. so it'd be nice to hear that again. When Maria comes back, you can have a nice three-way dynamic with them. Not like a love triangle thing, but Maria is their manager, sure. trying to get the best for her guys, her husband, and her husband's new best friend. So the thing that's bringing them together is they both debuted roughly around the same time and have done and they nothing. Been... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm going. I like that. No, I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> It's off the top of my head. I can't think of any two other guys in the SmackDown or Raw roster. I, I was thinking, I, the two names that kept on coming up in my head was Cesaro and Sheamus. But they are doing something. I know, <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't write them down. And uh, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. But they're, but a they're already an act. Yeah. But I still sometimes think of them as separate. So I have gone for Dolph Ziggler and Bo Dallas. Okay. So let's just imagine they're on the same brand and Bo Dallas has gone back to his old Bo Leave gimmick, which I loved, the motivational speaker. And maybe he goes with Dolph as a, you know, because Dolph's in and out of mm -hmm. where he is in his career and he's always saying he's the best. Uh, but Bo Dallas is like, I'm going to take you on as a client and I'm going to make you the best wrestler in the WWE. And Dolph's like, fine, okay, let's do this. And I think that could be a very good comedic dynamic of Bo Dallas's eternal optimism and Dolph being very grumpy about it. And I, yep. th I think you get over as a babyface act. Uh, two other people I would like to put forward. Uh, Finn and Seth, the Iron Men of WWE. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they just become the, the Iron Man tag team of yes. WWE, where they literally dress up like Iron Man. Okay, yeah. you go, you go full on like full, that. I mean, yeah, I mean, white, Just blue, yeah, blue circles, blue bits in the middle. Yep, some, uh, that's what some say. I'm going to move on to Nicholas Ravioli. I simply ask, a spicy meatball. When do you, Ravioli. when do you think Okada is going to lose his IWGP Championship? And more importantly, who do you think will end up taking the title from him? This sounds like a small question. It doesn't. It doesn't. It really <laughs> is I, a massive question. But I think that. NJ New Japan has an incredible amount of faith in Okada, and I personally can't see him losing it at any event other than a Wrestle Kingdom. Because of this, I don't see him losing the belt until 2019, and I could even see him holding it until 2020, providing he doesn't get injured, which is a pretty difficult thing to do in New Japan. Not necessarily, Not necessarily because they've got yeah. uh, they work the two weeks on, two weeks off. There are a lot less, sorry, a lot fewer injuries in New Japan than there are in WWE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that problem, was that exact reason. You get a nice rest. Mm. Uh, when do you think Akada is going to lose the belt? I, I was almost in Nicholas's uh, book as well. Where I was like, I don't think he's going to lose it until a Wrestle Kingdom event. However, like him losing at a non-Wrestle King Kingdom event would almost be even... Such a huge shocker, that, yeah. It'd be even better because that's the one thing people aren't expecting. Mm. It's to be like, oh, he, just, he lost it at uh, you know the following day. You know, a New Year's Dash or something like that, or a New Beginning show, somewhere where you aren't expecting him to lose it, I think mm. would be more more impactful for uh, for for New Japan, especially news wise, because all of a sudden everyone's like, "Oh my God, Akada's yeah. lost the belts!" And it, you know, if, even if you do it sometime next year, you do another Wrestle Kingdom where he defends the title in the main event. Um, he's the Roman Reigns of New Japan, but people like him, and um, you know, maybe do something like that. I think that'd be that'd be really interesting. But the question is like. I mean, it's not even who. It was a when question. So I know there's a who there. I mean, there's as well. a who there as well. I thought there was a who there. Who? 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 Who do you think Okada might well, lose the belt to? You've got two guys, haven't you? Naito and Omega, mm -hmm. and uh, they're both. I apparently Naito is the bigger money draw in Japan. He's he's more attractive for uh, getting live attendance and whatnot. 
and he's so freaking cool. He is quite cool, isn't he? But Kenny Omega has the the worldwide acclaim more, and you know the, I, there is always a ticking time bomb. When is he going to go to WWE? I don't really feel that about Naito, but Omega is so uh, presumably attractive to Amer- uh, to, to WWE because he's got that North American heritage. Can it, can Canadian? You can say North America. Canada is in North America as a continent. Is it? Yeah, you've got the United States, and then you've got Canada. Is that really? Is that and so? then you've got North America, and then you've got South America. Oh, I, I just thought it there because it was go. his own country. It wasn't part of the continent. No, but I, I didn't do very well at school, guys. There you go. Well, I'm sure I'm actually wrong. And everyone's now <laughs> shouting at me. I made the foolish error of, you know, thinking I was right on something. <laughs> but uh, John Brower over here. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was just... I'm a one-man team. I'm going to try and get everyone's names wrong now as well. <laughs> so, Okaito. <laughs> That's too similar to what his TNA yeah, name was, yeah. though. Uh, I, you know, I really like the idea of him losing it at a non-Wrestle Kingdom. I think. So I think he'll keep it until Wrestle Kingdom 13, 14, well, yeah, 2019. That- and he'll lose it to Naito. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think you'll have Omega versus Ibushi. The breakup of the Golden Lovers at Wrestle Kingdom next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can give that. Uh, so, so I, but I would, I think that would be an an amazing story based on Okada and Omega's history for Omega to beat him before, uh, before the year's out, but then Omega retain at Wrestle Kingdom mm. because I think if Okada is challenging for the title at Wrestle Kingdom, everyone's going to assume he's winning it back here. But if you, that could almost be a, as huge as a crowning achievement as winning the title, just successfully defending against Okada. And that's exactly, well, it's a very similar story to what they told with the Okada versus Tanahashi. Because that third one, the final time that Okada managed to beat Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom was a championship retention. Mm-hmm. But it was just such a big deal because you're like, oh my God, he's, he's done it. He's, be- he's uh, retained or beaten him. Yeah. It's unboxing time. We haven't done this for a while. No, I'm, fa- I'm actually excited. In fact, we've actually had some messages from people saying, like, are you going to do another unboxing? Yes, yes. So it'd be nice to actually get into these. Well, it was so busy with, like, some fantasy booking warfares, 500k day. We didn't get a chance to do this in the Wrestle Ramble. Of course, if you go to wrestlecrate.co.uk, there is the web address in a confusing X format. Don't try and write .co.uk in the middle of the word wrestle. Uh, you and use the code WTTV on your first order, and you'll get a free DVD or autograph. <laughs> Things we do for you free guys. Free stuff. I mean, we're all about giving you lots mm. of free stuff. So I'm actually wearing my T-shirt from, from the last, the time. last one we did. So, yeah, I mean, I, a T-shirt that I actually really wanted. I, and you just, you I wanted it more. You bagged it essentially. I wanted it more. You can have Gangrel. <laughs> Well, yeah, but that's that's part of the background. New background is coming yes. soon, by the way. I know we we've hit our goal, but mm. these things don't happen overnight. We've actually yeah. got to get the the thing made. Got to build it. Yeah, and uh, we had five hundred five hundred k day was just every waking moment last week. Yeah, pretty much. I was up till like eleven o'clock most nights trying to get eleven. Things I know. Oof. Eleven. Crikey. Yes. I mean, the, that, and me and John Bravo, we're one man teams. <laughs> So what have we got here first? Well, t-shirt. Oh, t-shirt, right. <gasps> We've two? got a few t-shirts. Oh, well, okay. This could Ooh. settle the argument of, of uh, t-shirt okay. stuff. Let's have a look. I really want you to include this for podcast listeners one day. Uh, yeah, that's just probably not going to happen. Just to, just to confuse them. Yep. So what we, oh, sorry, man. Sorry. What have we got there? Walter. Oh, it's a oh, water, no, t-shirt. water t-shirt. I thought it said monster for a I second. I thought it then. said Vader. <laughs> but yes, that <laughs> is like uh, like Vader. Big Van Walter or Walter. I don't think he's called Big Van Walter anymore. That's when I used to watch him before he was cool. Uh, no, but seriously, Oh, I did. Ollie. Yeah, oh, I God. Did. So ahead of the curve. So that's Ollie nice. Meltzer over here. Nice T-shirt there. Uh, we've got another T-shirt. This is a large. And it's uh, it looks like a comic book style thing. Mm-hmm. I like it already, apart from that Comic Sans. Oh, yeah, Comic Sans. But overall, I think it works within the design. Let's have a look at this T-shirt. Oh, that is nice. That is cool. Can I have it? Do you want that one? I, of course yeah. I want this Can one. Can I have the Walter one then? Yes. Okay, cool. I I'll much have... prefer this one. Yeah, I'll have the Walter t-shirt. Arena Mexico Lucha Libre. That's cool. I mean, yeah, I don't really cool. fit into a large anyway. Well, I, I think it might look a bit baggy on me. Yeah. I'll eat some cakes. I'll have some crumpets. Thanks, man. There's we do actually have some mine. cakes outside. Um, next up, we have a DVD 
the US Championship DVD, A Legacy of Greatness. This is a history on the US Championship. Oh, I bet that'd be quite a good little documentary, yeah. actually. Is it a documentary or just matches? Oh, hmm. some of the matches are really cool, though. Yeah, of course, some um, Starcade stuff Starcade, in there. Nine, 85, 87. So it's going to be mostly but, WCW I mean, stuff, it, of It's course. all on the network anyway, but still. That's the confusing thing about it. Yeah, but anyway. It's because cool, they, cool. they have deals, I suppose, with these, um, like with Fremantle mm. Media. They have to keep making these DVDs. That's, of course, a three-disc set. Next up. Oh, that's cool. I think you'll want that, though. That is because like, you're more into badges. There's some Macho Man glasses. Oh, I do like that. Yes. You can have that, buddy. Thanks, man. I'm going to put that on my coat. Yeah. Yeah. Add it to the collection. I've got another when DVD. I get, when I get to wear my non-winter coat. This is a curious one. This is Rosemary versus Alley. Oh, wow. Demon versus the Slayer. Ooh. So this is done in the style of a Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It is indeed. Late 90s DVD. And it seems to be like a collection of matches of theirs uh, throughout the years. Because that's Cherry Bomb, mm. which is Ali's uh, other name. Kimberly, Kimberly. Which was just released from WWE. Yep. Ooh, very cool. Huh. Very interesting. Does it, does it have any details inside? Does it have a sleeve? Nope. No. We're past those days of sleeves. Yeah, and special features. This looks cool. Oh my god, it's a signed Virgil dollar. Oh, wow. No. Oh my god. Oh, I bet you someone queued up for ages to get that. Ah, former WWE superstar. <laughs> Look at that. Term cool. used loosely. Uh, well, that can that might go on our new set. Now we've got some... Some more signed a comic, stuff. A signed comic. It's Mandrews versus the Bruiserweight. Oh, cool. I don't know who's... Oh, it's signed by both of them. Oh. That's Pete Dunne there in comic book form. Signed by Pete Dunne. And Mark Andrews signed by Mark Andrews. Does this it have is... his terrible band uh, provide the music to it when you open it? How dare you say that about Mark No, Andrews. it doesn't. Oh, dare me. Uh, There's no offence to Mark Andrews. I just don't like that music. by Laura Potter, which is very nice. It's, this is a full-on... full-on comic book. Comic book. It's weird how there's such a a crossover between wrestling and comic books mm-hmm. in terms of like portraying people as superheroes and just the fan base. But I never think they work that <laughs> well together. This looks cool. And it's signed. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And it's got Pete Dunn in. Thanks, Russell Crate. Uh, what have we got next? Oh, more Pete Dunn. Oh, it's the catalogue. It's the Matters catalogue. This yeah. is the thing that tells us what everything is. Yeah, see, there's the Rosemary Alley vs. DVD. Yes. Why don't you tell us what it was? Because it's from Smash Wrestling. This best-selling DVD comes from Smash Wrestling in Canada and documents the war between the Demon and the Slayer. Both Rosemary and Alley are current Impact Wrestling stars and have both held the Impact cha- uh, the Knockout Championships. You can see the entire epic feud on this collectible DVD. That'd be quite fun, actually. Mm. I might watch that uh, myself. So what else have we got here? I think we've got one more. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think I might just be no, advertising no, or something. Oh, no, no, it is. It's, it's an art print. So the, oh, oh, that is that's cool. That's cool. Signed by, by Brett, Brett Hart. The hitman himself. So that is that, that is the original Hasbro figure of Brett Hart from yeah. 1992. You know, the, we've got the uh, the updated version of them here somewhere. I can't see them now. It's, uh, it's right there. Oh, yeah, there's <laughs> Stone Cold right there behind us. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Signed by Bret Hart as well. Right, and if you go to World, I mean, I'm, you know, what I'm doing with the rest of my afternoon. WorldWrestlingFigures.com. Mm. It's uh, an action figure price guide website. Oh, oh. what They've else got, you got on uh, there? Bucky O'Hare, oh Transformers, Ghostbusters, TMNT. Oh, it's all the stuff. It's I bloody love the '90s. It's all the stuff I like. So the thing we're most excited about, really, is this advertisement. An advertisement. <laughs> But that's everything else is really cool. I'll probably yeah. be wearing. Um, I'm going to change into my new T-shirt now. Should I think we wear we them should, tomorrow yeah. for tomorrow's videos? Uh, yes. Why don't we do that? Yeah, I, good I, advertisements. I always have to check if T-shirts go with my jacket now. Yes. That's well, it's a white thing. T-shirt, and although it's quite a busy white T-shirt to go with such a busy jacket. Yeah, but it's got a few. Co- oh, no, I thought it had more. I thought it had a pink or something. Because the great thing about this T-shirt. Oh yeah. That's the purple from oh, inside the jacket. Lovely stuff. Let's give this a go. It is busy. Okay, well, that's all we've got time Subscribers for. Subscribers of the month. We're not featured. Well, let's sort that out. Uh, so, that yeah, out. go to wrestlecrate.co.uk and use WTTV discount code to get a free DVD or autograph. And click the videos that have just appeared on our laps to catch up with the latest Wrestle Talk news or Wrestle Ramble. Subscribe to this channel because we're climbing the hill. 
to one mil. Ian, subscribers, we're still working on the slogan. And subscribe to Wrestle Ramble wherever you get your podcasts from. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen. And that was wrestling. Rambling. Close. <laughs>